President Biden was reportedly frustrated with Vice President Harris in the first months of their term, calling her a work in progress, according to a New York Times bestselling author, Chris Whipple. The president was not too pleased after learning the vice president's husband was complaining about her policy assignments. Her roles included in addressing the root cause of the immigration crisis and promoting voting rights legislation. Uh, there is a quote from the book we want to share with you. It says, Biden was annoyed. He hadn't asked Harris to do anything he hadn't done as vice president, and she'd begged him for the voting rights assignment. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, this book with Julia Manchester, national political reporter for The Hill. Uh, so you'll recall early last year, there was a lot of reporting uh, that said that Vice President Harris was put in a difficult spot politically, being put in charge of the border. Uh, but now this new book appears to confirm that Vice President Harris really saw it as dangerous. What are your thoughts or what do you know about that? Yeah, Adrian, it's interesting. And I wouldn't say it's surprising to see some tension between any vice president and the president over issues like this. But it absolutely is a tough spot to be in politically, especially when we know the extent of the issue at the border crisis at the border and how much is needed to you know be done down there. There are many that would say that this is something that extends far beyond the vice president. But look, I mean, a lot of I think the tension you hear about out of this White House, um, you know, you're going to continue to hear about this in a number of books and you've seen the white house really push back on this saying they weren't approached for comment and such but you know i think this is normal to hear about this tension between a vice president and a president it's interesting here to know that these uh two were in a democratic primary with each other like so many other past presidents and vice presidents are there was clearly tension in that primary and we're seeing that really apparently purportedly carry over into their day-to-day -day jobs there has been a lot of uh, reporting of competing camps, the president's allies versus the vice president's team. I know that a number of people actually departed uh, from uh, Vice President Harris's team over the past uh, several months. But where does the relationship stand now? Are these tensions completely in the past, as the book claims? You know, it's interesting because there's such a uh, contrast, I would say, between uh, Biden and Harris compared to Biden and Obama, who were really seen as this team sort of attached at the hip. And you saw the White House very much from a PR standpoint, really try to relay that in their messaging and public appearances and such. And you see Biden and Harris very much together at public events and such. Um, we haven't heard too much about any, um, you know, tension recently. Um, this seems to have been at the beginning of the presidency, I think, as everyone was getting their footing. Uh, but we'll have to see. Um, I'm sure that there will be new revelations, new reporting. But from what, what we know now, it seems to be in a better position. The RCP average finds President Biden's approval at just over 43 percent. Vice President Harris's approval is right around 35 percent. But when you look at a survey of voters, over half disapprove of both of them. Uh, heading into 2024, if Biden were to run again, what are the chances that he would do so without Harris? You know, it's hard to say because Biden and Harris, um, you know, breaking with a vice presidential uh, vice president pick going into a reelection bid would be a risk, especially when she is someone who is seen as a historic pick and represents so much for women, people of color. Um, so it would definitely be a tough decision for Biden to have to go forward. But I think there's also without her. But I think there's also the question of whether Biden will run himself. He has said and the White House has affirmed he will definitely run again. Again, but there is the legitimate question about his age. There is the legitimate question about you know what others in his party um, think about him when it comes to getting more progressive ideals pushed through Congress and pushed through the White House. So you know it's unclear what's going to happen now. But there is an argument that you know essentially says that the Democrats performed so well in the midterms under Biden, sort of defying that conventional wisdom, because Republicans had just god awful, terrible candidates. So if Republicans really turn it around by 2024, I think you're going to see the Democrats really taking an inward look because so much can happen between now and then. We're going to see recalibrating on both sides. Well, it's interesting you say there are these awful, terrible candidates on the Republican side, but there aren't really a lot of options on the Democratic side, at least in some of these uh, offices, including president. We're going to see what happens. All right, Julia Manchester, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.